Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And uh, we're continuing our, our journey towards Easter, towards the cross, the tomb, the resurrection from the dead of Jesus. And uh, today we're looking at one of the words of Jesus from the cross. And it, and it may be the most perplexing one of all. Uh, maybe you even forget that it's there. It's in John 19, and it's when Jesus said, I thirst. I thirst. Now, you might wonder, why in the world is that included in the Gospels of Jesus saying, I thirst? Uh, let me see if I can explain it on, on two fronts. First of all, it's in there because Jesus literally died physically as our Savior. Now, in the, in the first century, later in the first century, there was a, a group of people called Gnostics, which just means they were know-it-alls, and they thought that knowledge was the key. And they really believed that Jesus only died, uh, uh, well, he didn't die spiritually. They believed his body died, but his spirit left his body on the cross and, and abandoned him and wasn't really, you know, sacrificed for us completely. And, and that was denounced as a heresy. The Apostle John wrote about it extensively in 1 John. In fact, he said, if anyone denies that Jesus came in the flesh, then he's, uh, you know, not of us. And so, uh, you know, we believe Jesus died physically. And in that declaration, I thirst, he's saying, I'm, I'm physically suffering here and I'm physically thirsty in this moment. Now they gave him some sour wine and, and, uh, and all trying to uh, see what would happen next. But, but that was to fulfill scripture. So he said, I thirst. Now, the other, the other part of this is for us. It's for you and me as followers of Jesus Christ to understand that whatever we're going through, Jesus understands. Here's how the writer of Hebrews put it. In Hebrews chapter 4, he says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet was without sin. See, the high priest was the representative of people to God. Jesus is our high priest. He's the one who's representing us to God. In other words, when we receive the grace of God in Jesus Christ, then we're no longer guilty because Jesus goes to the Father and says, they're, they're, they're guiltless because of me. He's our representative, and he's a great high priest. But he's not just great because he was the sacrifice for our sin, but he's great because he relates to us. And you heard the writer of Hebrews say he was tempted in every way, just as you and I are, yet he didn't sin. He was human in every way that you and I are, yet he was without sin. So human, in fact, that not only did he hurt on the cross, not only did he bleed on the cross, but he got thirsty on the cross. So when you're weak, Jesus understands weakness. When you're in pain, Jesus understands pain. When you suffer betrayal or rejection, Jesus understands. When you're alone and you're depressed, Jesus gets it. Uh, look, if you're a man and you're faced with the temptation of lust, Jesus was faced with the temptation of lust. He didn't give in to any of those temptations. He was like us, yet without sin. But he was like us. He understands you. He understands your struggle. And here's the best part. He is for you. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to overcome temptation. He wants you to overcome those habits that destroy your life. And he's interceding for you at the throne of God. So when you read, I thirst, understand Jesus was fully human, just as we are. And he understands everything that we're going through. And he's with us, pulling for us, trying to help us be the people that God created us to be. I don't know about you, but that's encouraging to me that Jesus understands. He's not above the fray, but he entered into our world and he walked in our footsteps and he understands our joys and our sorrows and he's helping us to be uh, all that we were created to be. So today, I, I hope you are encouraged by the fact that, that Jesus is pulling for you, he's advocating for you, and he understands you. Uh, God bless Calvary, and have a great, great day.